<clears throat> Hi, and welcome to the 2019 paper one of the Leaving Cert Ordinary Level. This is question seven. And as usual, if you want a copy of the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email address should be in the description below. So support a different part of this uh, video, just taking a pause and, pause and taking a second to try the question yourself. So I assume you're back. And we're looking here at question seven. It's kind of a longer question. It's worth 55 marks, so many, many parts to it. It's the first question, section B. Uh, a lot of the parts follow on from one another, so it kind of can be, we can ask much bigger things. So a Komogi goalkeeper on a level pitch hit a ball straight up into the air. The path that the ball traveled can be modeled by the function. And that's, um, so the F of T or is equal to this quadratic expression. Let's say t can be any number. t is time, it's measured in seconds from when the ball is hit. f of t is the height of the ball in a given amount of time. So height is a function of time. The ball landed on the ground without being hit again. So graph this just as a curiosity. Was the way axis of one that's the height it was kicked from okay goes up gravity will slow it down stop mid-air and then come back down to the ground okay so that's this particular quadratic expression is modeling that movement so different points along the speed or the the rate of change of the height versus time is changing so it's slowing down stopping at this point so that here the speed is zero or the slope is zero and the slope becomes negative uh, coming down until it becomes zero when it hits the ground. So only these, this part of the positive y and positive x axis is applicable in this scenario. So that's what we use. One of the reasons we use maths is to model the world around us. Now, this um, section, this question is going to involve differentiation at some stage. Or I'd be very surprised if it doesn't. So part A says, at what height was the ball when it was kicked by the goalkeeper? Looking for when the ball was kicked, what was the time? Well, it was zero. Okay, so both these terms are going to go away. And you're going to be left with one. So I've shown that there. I've just substituted zero in for the time. Everywhere I see the time, I've put it in put it to the calculator or just realize that anything times zero is zero. Anything times zero is zero. So they've gone away. You just left the one. So the height when the ball was kicked was one. I actually should put in the units. One meter. Not sure if it would have lost a mark by not having the units in there. Um, now part B, part one here. Now it's a huge chunk of marks. And uh, it seems to be part one and two are marked together. So there's 20 marks. And it's uh, part one here says, complete the table below to show the height of the ball at various intervals during the first four seconds of its flight. And they give you different breakdowns, 0 0.5 seconds, 1 second, etc. We've done a question like this in a previous part of paper 1, 2019. And you're just basically using your function and you're plugging in your, for lack of a better word, x value and getting your output or your y value. Okay, so I've done a sample calculation here. And I've put it wherever I should use the one from part A. When zero goes in, one comes out. When a half goes in, so if I replace that with 0.5 and 0.5 and put it to the calculator, I should get eight. Done the same thing for all the other um, values of t and got the equivalent heights. Okay, now I've just shown one calculation. And as long as you show the calculation, and you're going to be in a pretty good place and then fill in the table. Always kind of make sure um, it makes sense. And a quadratic the figure should be the same on both sides. Otherwise, it's not quadratic. Now, that might not be obvious uh, from this question. I'm then going to come along and graph these values. Okay, and I've basically created a, a kind of like that graph we just had uh, on the previous page. Okay, I've taken this from the actual marking scheme. So that's one they they be, they be working off. Um, you're in a uh, quadratic is a second order polynomial, so it should be smooth okay, and continuous. 
And this is, if it ever happened that you came off and it was like a bulge here, that's an indication that that point there is wrong. Just check your calculation and make sure you didn't make an error in doing that calculation. Okay, so that's, that's the marks for, um, for that. Now part C here is looking to use the graph to find things out. So it says use your graph to estimate and you must show the work on the graph. That's one of the most important things. Okay, um, with lines and dotted lines, whatever. Part one says the length of time the ball was in the air from the time it was hit until the time it landed on the ground. Basically, all of this value here. How long was it in the air? It was in the air for, well, a little over four seconds. So I'm estimating that from the graph there as being 4.1. Your graph will be read off. Whatever your graph says, wherever your graph hit the, the x-axis, it's the length of time the ball was in the air. Now, in part two then says, the length of time the ball was 10 meters or more above the ground. So if I find where 10 meters is on the, the height axis, I bring a line across, well, it was above 10 from here all the way around to here. So how long was that? Well, was, I'm estimating here it was from 0.6 of a second up as far as 3.4 seconds. So take that away, 3.4, take away 0.6, I got 2.8. The units seconds i should put in the units here of actually seconds as well okay again i'm not sure if i lose a mark um for that if i did though I, if i did lose a mark i'd lose it for part one i wouldn't lose it again in part two um that's one rule they apply when they're marking it i should always put units in no matter what even if i'm not sure put the units in Okay, part D, part one here says, find F of T. So find the derivative of that. Now we've differentiated in the previous question on this paper as well. Um, so for to differentiate, you're multiplying the power by number in front. Okay, so the answer will be here. Uh, two by negative four is negative eight. Step two of the power rule and differentiation says, take one from the power. So Two take one is one. Okay. Uh, then the 16th here, you learn off when you're differentiating, if there's a, uh, only a power of 1 in the variable, the variable disappears, so you're left with the 16. If you differentiate a constant, the constant turns to 0. So this expression here is telling me the slope okay, of the curve at any point. That slope is equivalent to the speed. So part 2 says, use your answer from part D, part 1 to find the speed of the ball, or the slope of the ball, when it had been in the air for four seconds. Give your answer in meters per second. Okay, so I'm basically using the slope equation I just found from, by differentiation, or in essence, whatever answer I got here, and even if I didn't, wasn't able to differentiate, you could make up some answer. That is accepted as perfectly correct in the next part. Put your value of t in, okay, um i was told it was four put it through the the, the rule and i end up with the calculator getting a number, an answer of negative 16 meters per second which might seem weird but if you went back to the graph four seconds it's on the way down okay so positive going up zero negative coming back down okay so it's negative and the 16 and we were told the units were meters per second now part three says use your answer from part d part one Okay, so this thing again, to find the value of t for which the ball was descending and traveling at a speed of eight meters per second. So that means negative eight. Okay, so we kind of saw that a second ago. Eight meters per second, but it's on the it's descending, so it's going down, so it's negative. So my slope function is this. It's going to tell me that my slope is, no, I didn't actually say it there. Mistake, okay, should be a negative eight there. Um, that negative eight, is equal to, so if, I suppose the logic here, if these two things are equal, and they are, then these two things are equal. So once I've realized that I can put them equal to each other, then I realize this is an equation of one unknown. So I can solve it. Go ahead by bringing the numbers across to one side. Actually what I've done is I brought the AT across here. And the AT becomes uh, positive on the left. The minus eight becomes positive one across to the right. And I get AT equals 16 plus 8, which is 24. So 8 times some number is 24. The number has to be 3. Now I'm not sure if that question is finished now. And it is. So that's question 7. Now it's 
got through it pretty fast. Yeah, it's worth going back over it. There's a lot going on there. Um, it's the whole. It's a good question. Can't say it's going to definitely come up every year, just like that. But it's a nice question of that type. It's ten minutes. So again, it's question seven. And thank you very much.